How's everybody doing today? I'm Pete here with Spawn Fly Fish and I've decided to let you into one of my little secret flies. I'm going to tie up one of my favorite midge patterns. It's got the little bubble wing on top. I do mine a little bit differently than, than most tires. So I thought I'd let you guys in on, I guess if I have any secrets, this would be one of them or had. Uh, so please, if, if you're into fishing midges, chronomids, bloodworms, whatever you want to call them, you're going to enjoy this and it's something invaluable right now, especially in the colder months, uh, a lot of lake fishing. This is, this is what the fish are looking for because it's what's available. So hope you tie along, hope you catch a bunch of fish with this pattern. And if you had any fun, please hit like and subscribe at the end of the video and go ahead and click that notification button too. So you know, whenever we've got another one coming out, thank you so much. All right, everybody. So here we've got the core hook. And this is the style number 1120. This is a size 12. And as far as midges go, this is, a, you know, on the bigger end of the spectrum. But if you're in the, the northern hemisphere and the, the midges tend to be a little bit bigger in those colder regions. But since we're in the wintertime fishing, I figured this would be a good time to show you a nice little midge pattern. We're going to tie this in red so you can see we've got a silver bead on here. We're going to have silver wire for the rib and this bead is the Cyclops bead brass and the nickel finish. It's a size 7 64ths and that's from Hairline. Now I've got some non-lead wire 0.015 and I'm just going to make about four or five wraps and I'm not trying to make this significantly heavier with the wire. It's just to hold that bead in position and then it's also going to build a ramp for one of our little secret moves here. So just want to kind of round that down, get a smooth edge, slick that into the back of the bead and jam it in there like so. And now I'll cut that back piece off and I'm just going to round it so that we don't cut our thread right away. And pop it back in there. All right. And then that's about as fancy as that needs to be. We're going to start our thread. And for this fly, for the way I tie coronamids, I really, really enjoy um, the ultra thread and the 70 denier. And the reason is this, I can make it lay as flat as I would like. And some other threads tend to get a little thin when I do that, but this one really holds well. So what I'm going to do is just get a couple angled, 45 degree angle wraps going forward and back. And I'm going to do it one more time and come back. And that's good. For our rib, like I said, we're going to be using some ultra wire, size small, color silver to match that bead. But before we tie this in to use it as a rib, we're going to use this to receive our, our bubble wing, if you will. And when I tie this in, I, I like to pick the left portion or what is toward you of the top of the hook shank. And once I've got this started, I can turn it and show you. I'm just going to get a couple wraps here to hold it. And you can see it's on the top of the shank, but it's, it's toward my side or the near side. So I'm going to push it toward the far side or nearer to you and show you what that looks like on the top. So that's what we're looking for. And the reason being, we're going to bring this back over itself after this next step. So I'm going to continue wrapping this toward the bead and I want to get this thread right behind that bead. And you can see if I lift up on that wire, it's still in contact with the bead. So now here comes the tricky part. I'm not sure if you can see that. That's a size 15 clear craft bead. And I'm just going to slip it onto the end of what will be the ribbing wire. And I'm going to lift up and you'll see that bead slide right down on top. Now, before you pull this back over, you want to maintain downward pull or pressure with your thread. And what happens is now as I pull this wire back, it's not going to slip and it's not going to put the bead halfway back down the fly. It's just going to keep it right here. And then I'm going to catch it with my thread 
and this is right where the wing pad or wing case would be on the natural, and that's just what we're trying to emulate. So now, let me get a couple thread wraps down. I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise. Now, if your thread is resting and you just let go of it, you'll see that it wants to start to rotate. Whichever direction it wants to rotate means it's overly corrected in the opposite direction. So for this, I'm rotating it counterclockwise, meaning I want that thread to lay flatter. If I rotated it clockwise, I then would be tightening that rope of thread and it would make it uh, just a little bit thicker and stronger. But what we want here is a, a flat, even layer. And I'm gonna spin it down one more time. And as you can see, I made about three or four X wraps there around the bead. And that's just gonna secure the wire and prevent anything from moving off of center. So now I'm going to just, in touching thread wraps here, slightly overlapping, keep that thread, or keep the wire right on top of the hook shank. And then I'm gonna work this all the way back down to where I think the end of this little chronomet should be. Right there, I'm pretty happy. And again, I'm gonna just start working back up toward that bead again and touching just slightly overlapping thread wraps. As you can see here, you have a nice slim body, a, a bit of a taper, but we're gonna go ahead and wrap that again. And we're not gonna go quite as far as we did the first time. We're not gonna go all the way to the end of the, the wire here where it's tied, tied back down. I'm gonna stop about two thirds of the way. And again, nice controlled wraps coming back up. Get in front and then back. And we're gonna do the same thing this time. We're only gonna go down roughly one third and come back up and get that thread in front, and that's that. Um, as far as the direction on wrapping this wire, you don't have to counter wrap. In other words, you don't have to go opposite the direction of your thread wraps because there's nothing really being strapped down with at this point with the rib. So I'm just gonna lengthen that thread a touch, and then I'm gonna start wrapping this wire. Um, for, for whatever reason, I, I like to maintain roughly five wraps of wire, no matter what size midge I'm tying but that's just me. You, you do whatever makes you happy. So let's get this wrapped. Forgive me, I'm gonna turn this to the side, get one good wrap, and I'll try to turn this back over so you guys can see. There's that. We got, as you wrap this, since we built a nice little taper into the body, you don't have to be too concerned with the spacing of your wraps. It will automatically give the visual of larger spacing between each wrap. And that's kind of what we're going for here. The whole thing is tapered from the, the body shape even to the spacing of the wiring. So once you're happy with the wire right there, one wrap and two wraps and three. Now, what do we do with this wire to make sure it doesn't come out? We're going to bring it back and now you see where that last wrap of, of wire is behind the bead there. I want, when I cut this, I want that to sit on the bead side of that wire. So cut, turn it back to you. And now you'll see where I cut that wire is inside or toward the bead side of that last wrap. And then from here, it's simply a matter of covering all this good stuff and make look like that little bit of a thorax that a midge has. And if you wanted to, you could switch thread colors to black. I just want to see how we're doing covering that wire. Um, using black for the thorax of a midge is always a good idea, but is it necessary? Not always. Some, you know, Fisher. Fish are funny. Sometimes they want all red. Sometimes they want um, the, the traditional black and, and silver. You just never know. And so from here, I want two wraps for the whip finish behind the bead and three in front. I'll do that one more time. Two wraps of the whip finish behind this bead or wing case and three wraps in front. And now, there you go little bubble wing on top of this midge so that fish are reminded that this little helpless guy is trying to hatch 
and they know a bug is vulnerable when that's happening and it makes for easy pickings, if you will. So now let's get into some cement. Um, a lot of people, you know, at this point, it'd be real simple to, to get some resin, some flow or thin on there and just cure it up and that works great. I'm gonna show you another way. This is just some hardhead from Loon and I'm just gonna put a nice thin coat over all of it. This is all just a thread fly. So it's not gonna hurt anything to, to get a, a layer on the entire bug. And once you've had a, a few fish chewing on this, you'll be glad you did because these do get eaten up. Just a little bit more here. And again, tie this fly in a few sizes, a few different colors, and I don't see how you would have a bad day on the water in the winter time or any other time for that matter. Midges are in the water all year round, but they become increasingly important in the winter time. And there we have a blood midge with a little bubble wing on top. And now you know one of Pete's little secrets. So I hope you guys enjoyed this fly. It's a very successful fly. You should definitely, definitely have some in your fly box. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe. And we will see you guys soon. Thank you.